Welcome to the newest edition of Squib Kick Radio. I am your host, as always, Elias Powell, and I am joined here with Riley Pollock and a new addition to the Squib Kick Radio family, Mr. Harry Burton. Harry, how are you doing, buddy? Oh boy, I'm doing pretty good. Thanks. That is, uh, that's good to hear. So, it's been a busy off-season since... You guys have heard from us. Last we chatted with you, the New England Patriots had just won the Super Bowl over the Los Angeles Ram, Rams in the Snooze Bowl. Um, mm. But we are coming back with an action-packed offseason already. We have tons of free agency, just absolute madness for you guys in this episode. We're going to recap all the big moves, where everyone's going, what this means for the team, how they're going to do. We're going to break all of that down. But first... You know, let's uh, let's just touch on, I guess, a bold predicament or prediction, I guess, for the 2019-2020 NFL season. So, catching you both off guard, it's not in our script, but um, let's let's start with you, Riley. What's a what's a bold, literally week one prediction you can give us? I'm gonna say that the Browns make. The AFC Championship game. Yes, I love that. I wanted to even go higher and say Brown Super Bowl 2019 2020, but we'll we'll keep it conservative. It is the first episode of the podcast. Big moves out of Cleveland. Harry, give us a prediction. What do you think's happening? Bold prediction. Uh, you guys aren't going to like it. Um, I think realistically, Baker Mayfield is just shown as a subpar QB at best this year. He's got all the talent around him. And I, I just don't see him producing. I think it's... Do you think they make the playoffs? Well, I mean, they have the Steelers, who basically just sold away their team, which isn't the worst thing being a Raiders fan. But uh, the, they take playoffs. I'm still not happy about it, though. Do they come in at a wild card spot, Harry, or are they they are they making it past past the wild card? No, they're they're coming in they're coming in last minute into the wild card race and limping are, like a dog. And hey? they are doing nothing. But hey, at least right. at least Cleveland gets a gets one gets one playoff game. All right, uh, I like that. I like that. You know uh, what you got? Yeah. So I I like the two Browns the Browns predictions. I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to get on that train. Um, bold prediction from me is going to be that the New York Giants have the third worst record in the NFL, and they clean house. They fire everyone. That is my bold prediction. So, like, basically, Saquon's the last one left on the roster going into next season? Yeah, Saquon is the only one left. Eli's going to be gone. Their GM's going to be gone. Their coach is going to be gone. Everyone's going to be gone. They're cleaning house, and they're coming in with the third-worst record in the NFL. That is my bold prediction. And with that, let's just get into some free agency frenzy. I think it's appropriate to start with something that we tracked literally all season and yeah. that is the Le'Veon Bell saga is over. We know where he's going. He's playing football this year. And that place is the New York Jets. Huge signing. Big for the Jets. I don't think it plays out. Yeah, I don't know. I uh, Four years for $52.5 million to the Jets. $35 million guaranteed. But he got less on the free agent market after sitting out a year than what the Steelers offered him. I mean, it's a failure for him, isn't it? Doesn't he fail by not getting the amount of money that he wanted? Well, what part of, uh, what yes. part of his contract is guaranteed? Like, do we do we know that? Well, it just says $35 million is guaranteed out of 52.5. So, almost... So it's more guaranteed money than the Steelers were offering him, but less money total. And that, that obviously would have had to make a play on that. But I think if you're Le'Veon Bell, you're going to take that more guaranteed over a lesser salary, which, you know, I don't really, like, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not hugely opposed to that. I think he, I didn't know, I don't know if he failed. I mean, if you're a running back in the NFL and you're getting, you know, over $30 million guaranteed, I think that's pretty good. Plus he had a year off. I mean, his body, he said his body's never felt better. It's... 
it's going to be a good year for, for Le'Veon. And something less talked about is it's going to be even a better year for Sam Darnold. He he yeah. looked pretty decent at the end of last year. I mean, not terrible. And now you throw Le'Veon back there. Like, defense, when you're a defense going up against Lev, no matter what, he's catching your attention. So Sam Darnold's going to have it a little bit easier with Lev. Yeah, I definitely... Definitely agree, but that that offense just has so many question marks. It'll be interesting to see what Le'Veon Bell can do for that offense. But, you know, I don't see, I personally just don't see Le'Veon Bell just being a magic flitch or magic f- switch that's going to make the Jets a powerhouse. But, I mean, the, the stones on which the New York Jets can be built upon are now there. And it's up to them to draft smart and maybe make some make some good trades throughout the season. But moving on, we might as well stick in sort of the realm of the Steelers. Huge trade, not necessarily a free agent, you know, signing, but Antonio Brown has been traded to the Oakland Raiders. It's not news for anyone now, but I mean, I think he's screwed. Personally, I think this was worst case outcome for Antonio Brown. He got traded essentially in his prime to a rebuilding team. That was was his choice. He's screwed. That was his choice. Yeah. And I wouldn't call the Raiders a rebuilding team. Like, they're, well, maybe, maybe a functioning rebuilding team. It's either a a rebuild or a complete and utter failure as an organization. No, because Carr was the franchise quarterback when they were doing good, and it was all praise Carr. Everybody around loves Carr, and now the Raiders aren't doing too great, and it's super popular to just trash Carr. But, yeah, I don't know. They're coming back. Watch out for the Raiders this year. Yeah, it's it's interesting that the Steelers only got a third and a fifth, but AB did a great job of ruining his reputation during trade talks. So that someone had to trade for him. And he, reports are that he kind of nixed the trade to the Bills and said he wouldn't play for them if he went there at like the 11th hour. Well, so can you, the Bills can you trade blame fell through. No. I wouldn't hate playing with Josh Allen. But the rest of the team isn't very good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you do what you can. And it turns out the, um, the 49ers wouldn't give wouldn't give enough up for him so that's in itself is is interesting yeah but but uh yeah ob or ab is on the move to oakland and for you fantasy football owners me being one of them this severely affects antonio brown's stock you mean i i think he's a borderline wide receiver one now you know if you're if you've got him in the first round in a keeper league i would think twice about drafting him and if you're just in a redraft format he's not going in the first round and if you are you're a fool the receiver you should go for is Odell Beckham Jr. boom OBJ traded to the Cleveland Browns they're making moves we touched on it at the beginning of the podcast they now have arguably a top three receiver in the NFL, they have a young quarterback that has all the confidence in the world. They now can move Jarvis Landry down to that number two spot, which he thrives in. Maybe even move him around in the slot where he is. I think Odell he, will move down to that number two. No, they, that's, how they, that's how they did it in college. Yeah, but they are Landry has regressed and OBJ has progressed. 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 Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to make it sound similar, Riley, and you just had to do that. But yeah, anyways, huge news. Browns are Browns are in it to win it. They know this is their window. They've got the rookie quarterback. They're starting to see these trends of, you know, these young quarterbacks that don't get these max contracts being able to do well and succeed in systems that fit them. And it doesn't matter where he goes, Odell Beckham Jr. is gonna make a huge difference. Mm, yeah. did, did he make it, did he make uh, yeah. a huge difference last year? For the Giants? Look who is throwing him the ball. Look who's throwing him the ball this year. Like, it's Baker Mayfield, and it's it's still the Browns. Like, it, I, I'm not sold at all. I don't know. Juice, Juice and Odell is a greasy one, too, at receiver. And Nick Chubb in the backfield. I mean, 
Well, and Kareem let's, Hunt after let's, eight games. Yeah, let's, like, that's yeah. just like that locker room already. You can just tell is just crazy. I don't know. I, no. I don't yeah, buy but it. You can say that, I don't buy it. You can say the same thing about the Raiders. I mean, Antonio Brown is a psycho. Now they have Perfect in there, and the two of them hate each other. Gruden is off his rocker. Carr cries about everything and is trying to prove that he's not a crybaby. It's... That Raiders locker room is a mess too. I mean, I don't know. That just just sounds like some personal attack. Let's let's really just uh, like let's break down that Browns uh, starting lo- lineup on offense for their offensive weapons. You have Odell Beckham Jr. You have Jarvis Landry. You have Baker Mayfield, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt. When he comes back from a ten game suspension, that is correct. The NFL has suspended him ten games, so he Eight will games. be. Was it eight? I swear it was ten. Yeah. Oh, geez. Wow, they even lowballed him. Okay, well, he's coming back to play football, and he is taking that number one spot when he comes back. And that is a dangerous offense. Just young, smart football guys that they can have a heyday in that offense. So As long as they don't make it about themselves and become divas. Yeah. Like Odell has done every season since he's been in the league. I was going to say, I you know we'll what see... else were cool? Like back in the day? Like civics with like rims and body kits and all the accessories and flashy things you could have imagined. But at the end of the day, they were still civics. And at the end you of the day, see... the Browns are still the Browns, and Baker Mayfield is Baker Mayfield. You'll see a new Odell in Cleveland. You know, he's leaving New York. The spotlight is on him 24 7 in New York. He grew into the larger than life personality that you essentially need to have to survive the New York media. And now he's going to Cleveland. So he's also playing with one of his best friends from college. He's going to be having so much fun. And so I think they're just going to, uh, they're just going to, you know, sort of jive together and it's going to be an interesting, interesting offense to watch. Moving on here though, let's switch it up to the, I guess more defensive side of the ball. Let's let's go to the defense. We have Earl Thomas signing with the Baltimore Ravens. And we also actually this happened just a couple days ago. We have Clay Matthews signing with Riley help me out here as I the try. Rams. There we go. Two Thank year. you. Thank you. Two year contract with the Rams. So those are big big moves. Earl got his contract, you know, happy for him because God knows he he's earned it, um, and Clay Matthews is done with Green Bay, and yeah, that's so crazy starts to me. so starts the decline of the Green Bay Packers, if you ask yeah. me. Yeah, I don't think the Packers were very good last year, and I don't see them getting any better. What moves have they really made this offseason? They lost Cobb, and they lost Matthews. Now, I mean, well, since signing Rodgers to that contract, uh, they've kind of plateaued. Yeah, max contracts to quarterbacks or to any All Star player, really that isn't a lineman, uh, have been the demise of teams for a long time. Yeah. Look what happened with Russell Wilson. They win a Super Bowl, give him a max contract. They haven't been the same since. Too bad. Yeah, well, also on the uh, the def- defensive ball, moving this along a little bit here, we have Landon Collins going to the Washington Redskins. I mean, he's a fantastic player, but that is not going to make yeah, any difference. I was going to say, it's too bad you'll never hear his name again because he's going yeah, to yeah it's like putting gold specks on a piece of poop yeah pretty much washington is in complete disarray they can't they don't they can't keep a quarterback to save their lives their offense is so boring and their defense you know it got a little bit better but Did like the skins get case keenum this offseason uh yes i believe they Ugh. they traded the denver broncos for and then him. the broncos pick up joe flacco yeah right. <laughs> yeah, and that's actually a good segue fra- into, let's do the Ravens. Mark Ingram, running back for the New Orleans Saints, has left the Big Easy and is going to Baltimore. I think I like the pickup. I think it's a good fit. They're run heavy. He's a workhorse back. And then also exiting that offense, we have Joe Flacco to the Denver Broncos, which no one really, no one really was surprised by that. But yeah, big big moves in Baltimore. They they are making they're making a push. It's going to be Baltimore and um, the Browns.
Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, I don't know about the Ravens being up there with Baltimore or with the Browns because I think they lost a lot of players on defense. The Ravens, besides getting Earl Thomas, they got gutted on the defensive side of the ball. Suggs is gone. Few other players. I just. I don't trust Lamar Jackson, and their defense was the only reason they were good last year. And even with Earl Thomas, I think they took a step back. Yeah, that was um, middle linebacker, or just, I guess, linebacker, uh, C.J. Mosley, that they've also lost. Yeah, and he's young. He's a young kid. Yeah, so big loss for the Ravens, but, I mean, they could have an interesting offense. You never kind of really know what Lamar Jackson's going to do. So it was interesting to watch last season. It'll It'll be cool to see what they do now. There are some serious winners and losers within the NFL from this free agency. And Riley, why don't you just start us off and um, let's go with let's go with losers first. So, who do you think is is the biggest loser in in NFL free agency this year? Um, I gotta go with the Steelers. I think. I mean, when you lose your number one receiver and your best back, I know he didn't play last year. But on the roster, he's still the best back. Let's make no mistake about it. James Conner really faded in the back half of his rookie season. A.B. is a top three elite receiver. I know Juju's still there, and I think he can get to that spot. But, man, with Big Ben's age going up, he's not getting any younger, and those two leaving, I think that the Steelers go from being one of the top teams in their division to possibly being at the bottom if Cincinnati wasn't so bad at football. Yeah, for sure. Harry, what do you what do you have for uh, the biggest losers this free agency so far? Well, we kind of talked about it already, but I think definitely the New York Giants. It just kind of, trading away Odell Beckham just kind of solidified that last year when they drafted Saquon, they just, they really have no idea what they're doing. Like, yeah. they, need, they needed a quarterback last year in a draft full of quarterbacks, but they took a running back, so... Okay, we'll trust that the Giants know what they're doing, and you know maybe they see something in Eli that nobody else does, and it's just it's not producing. Now they trade away one of your only offensive threats. Yeah, they're a sinking ship. And they ship. lose, and they lose Landon Collins too. They're yep. si- they're a sinking ship. Yeah, that's a, that's going to be a very very bad football team. It's going to be. It's, yep. Well, I think the Jets are going to be happy to be the best team in New York, but. <laughs> Yeah, you can see the uh, the pendulum of the fan base just slowly swinging over back to the Jets. I don't actually know if you could say it's ever gone back to the Jets. The Jets haven't been good in my recent memory. Um, in terms of my biggest loser, I, I'm going to go a bit of a different re- approach. Obviously, those two teams are, I would say, the biggest losers. I would definitely agree with that, but... From team from a standpoint of teams trying to improve on a pretty dismal season, I would have to say I'm there with the Denver Broncos. They had a huge talent pool in both you know trade opportunities and free agencies to really make a difference. So I would put them up as one of my biggest losers, and. Just because that one's these are two kind of soft ones. I'm just trying to trying to think of someone else. Let's go the Miami Dolphins. I hate the Dolphins. Screw the Dolphins. <laughs> Get the frig out of here. You guys aren't doing anything. You're gonna be the worst team in the NFL. Hey, right. they got Fitz Magic, dude. Yeah, whatever. He's gonna get hurt because the football gods just don't want him to play for the Dolphins. Love the guy. Hate the Dolphins. All right. Yeah. Let's go. Uh let's go biggest winners. Harry, why don't you start us off on this one? Okay. My well, besides the Browns. <laughs> team. Okay. Okay. There you go. Raider. Besides the Browns, I don't think the Browns won. Um, you know what? The Raiders. The Raiders won. They got Antonio. They kept their first round draft picks. All three of them. That's a win. You get the be- You get one of the best receivers in football, and you still have three first round draft picks. What did? Uh, what did they? What did they get for Amari? A first round pick. Right. Yeah, that's, they that's got a right. first. That's right. That's yeah. called winning. Yeah, I got. I I'll, I'll agree with you. I don't know if they're the biggest winner. I don't think they take that from the Browns, but I would. Uh, I would definitely say they are. They are up there. Riley, what do you have for your gonna, your biggest winner? I don't know if a lot of people would pick them, but I'm gonna go with the Niners. 
They got Quan Alexander on the opening day of free agency. That's a pretty huge pickup in the linebacking core. D Ford from KC, that's huge. And, I mean, if McKinnon can't come back to what he was before, I think Brita and Tevin Coleman is a very outstanding one, too, at running back. So I think that the 49ers got significantly better in the first week of free agency. Nice. All right, I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with the obvious, but less obvious. The real winners of this year's NFL free agency are you, Browns fans. You guys <laughs> are the winners. Burn those paper bags. You actually have a football club now, and you guys will be someone this year. Let's go, Browns. Dog pound. They are going to go all the way. Let's go. I'm all on the Browns hype wagon right now, and you, Browns fans, are the real winners. So, uh Yeah. That's, Harry, uh, how that's do you winners feel about losers. that? <laughs> well, I mean, they they have to find something to cheer for since they don't have LeBron anymore. Fair. Yep, that is true. Another sport dagger for those poor Cleveland fans, but I mean, it's it's looking good for them in in Cleveland. In terms of the NFL going forward with us, we are going to come at you next week with a NFL draft preview. We're going to talk about who's on the board, where they're going to go. And what we think about their combine and, you know, just, you know, overall ability to transition into the NFL. So that'll be next week. But we do uh, have some uh, we do have some other football news to get to. Riley, let's start in everyone's favorite stepbrother league, the AAF. Oh, it's I wasn't really on board with the AAF. I know me and you had had some heated arguments about whether it was going to succeed or not. And I feel like. My perspective on it is coming away the victor so far. Um, They've had really bad crowds. All of their games pretty much hit the under on every betting scoreline. There's just not very many good teams, but... Hammer the under. There may be some light at the end of the tunnel as everyone's favorite quarterback, Johnny Manziel, has signed with the Memphis Express after being released by the CFL for violating his contract policies. Uh, Guys, he wasn't very good in the CFL. Yeah, the, his no. his biggest highlight was getting knocked out that one time to the Riders. Like <laughs> that's still playing. That was oh, yeah. that. That's his biggest highlight. Yeah. And can we talk about something else? Like, what was that Memphis team name? The Express. The Express. I think How it's can a train. I take your league seriously if you have a team called the Express? I think it's about a train. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Those yeah. of you in Memphis uh, yeah, could maybe even, vouch not, for that. I'm not even gonna go any further. Like that says enough. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just don't I don't see him being any better in the AAF. The talent pool in the CFL is better than the AAF. And who is I'm pretty sure he's the Memphis's third quarterback already this season because the other two have been so bad. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a publicity stunt like I feel the CFL getting him was, and I think he's done with football. He's just not a good quarterback. Yeah, he'll be selling cars. Just give it a couple years. But um, yeah. with that being said, I do if... have one more point from AAF. Sorry. Okay, here we go. Um, so it's come out Surprise today news. that they've moved the championship from a thirty-six thousand seat stadium in Vegas to a twelve thousand seat stadium in Texas. So the championship game is going from a thirty-six thousand place to a twelve thousand place. So that just tells you how this league is going this year. Yeah. Well, I mean, with that being said. If there is anyone from the AAF listening, Squib Kick can be bought. <laughs> and we will advertise your games every week. Just slide in those DMs at, at Squib Kick Radio and we will be super fans. I will tell you that much. Or if except you want to argue. You, against except for you, me. Memphis. Except for you, Memphis. Yeah. I'm not cheering for you. That's a, that's a dumb name. Um, if you want to argue against me and you're like a AAF beat writer or something, feel free to contact us as well because I will talk about it all day long. <laughs> yep, that is at Squib Kick Radio. Well, let's shift gears again. Let's go to Canada's favorite football league. I think I can. I think I can say that. I don't know. That's, Definitely Western Canada. Uh, un, un, yeah, we'll we'll go with that. We'll go with that for now. Um, yeah. Canada's favorite football watching, league, the but... CFL. Uh, Riley, we've got, uh, we've got some news this off season, which is quite exciting. Yeah, there's a, well, they have to get a new collective bargaining agreement done. The league's kind of withholding bonuses from the players. The players are getting a little pissed off. 
It's uh, it's not pretty, but it's not like NHL level collective bargaining where you like think that the season's gonna not play. Um, but so they've been talking for the past couple weeks. They switch cities so that all the representatives can go there and meet with the league. And this week, some news came out that the league is thinking about moving the seven mandatory Canadian starters down to five and then adding two world spots as well because you know how they've joined leagues in Mexico and Finland and Sweden and Germany and all Italy, I believe, as well, like all over the place in Europe. And now Australia is showing some interest as well. So Randy Ambrosi has this vision of CFL 2.0 and he wants to add two world roster spots to each team. But uh, Kickers, give us the kickers. uh, Some Canadians not stoked on that idea from going from seven starter spots to five because they feel like a lot of them were given the opportunity because of the seven roster spots, but then proved that they belong. You look at someone like Andrew Harris, who played junior football, didn't even play in university, but because he was a BC Lion representative, he played in VI, he got the shot, and now he's probably the best running back in the entire league, and he's a Canadian. You look at you look at some receivers. We've had Getzlav, you know, Fan Twos. I'm thinking of Ryder guys right now, obviously, but Rob Bag. I mean, those there's just Canadian players that if there's only five roster spots, might have never been given the chance. So the Canadians were pissed. Deron Carter and Ricky Foley got in this big spat. Deron Carter started telling people to kiss his ass, and it was a mess. But uh, it gets the people talking. So uh, what what do you guys feel like? Do you think we should keep the seven okay, Canadian spots go. or five? Those of you that are butthurt about this roster spot being moved, get over it. If you want your roster spot, be better at football. We're not giving away Canadian roster spots. I get it's the Canadian football. It's not Canadian football because we have mandatory Canadian roster spots. We have our own set of rules. We have our own field. We have our own, you know, completely different fan base. The Canadian Football League isn't built off having seven Canadians. Like, if you want to make a team... Go and get better. We're not giving you gimme spots. I love the world move. Let's get some crazy Aussies that are just huge as tight ends. Let's get some kickers that can actually kick the ball more than 45 yards. I love it. Let's go. CFL's progressing. Harry, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, as far as progress goes, like the best, the best players should be on the field for the sake of the game. And... The, the, the CFL's got to be feeling some pressure from the AAF and the XFL coming next year. So this is definitely this is definitely coming from somewhere. I, I can definitely understand. But, you know, it is the Canadian Football League, and we're Canadians. Like Riley said, like, sometimes those people just need an opportunity. Why should some Australian kicker get the opportunity than some kid? Because he's better at football. That is why. But you're... But, then he has to be an Australian player. Maybe that. Maybe there's a Canadian player that is better, but they have to now. They have to fill that Austra- or that world spot. So it's still there's still handouts. They didn't, they're just changing up the order now, and they're taking away handouts that should be Canadians, and they're giving those handouts to people that aren't. The the problem I see with the five roster spots is that I feel like they'll just stick all the Canadians on the O line and at like D tackle or something, you know. Like, I feel like if they did go down to five, they would have to make a skill position mandatory as well. Because you, you've got to give these kids options. I mean, there's just so much more ab- availability to scout American players as opposed to Canadians that, of course, an American's going to get noticed more than a Canadian player is. They play against higher talent, but that doesn't mean they're better. There's really good Canadians. There is more and more each season going down to the NCAA to play football from Canada because... I mean, football's booming in Saskatchewan. Team SAS goes down to Texas and beats a team from Texas almost every single year. It's, it, if they're given the opportunity, they've shown that they can thrive. I don't think that they should take it away. If anything, they should go to six Canadian and one world, but five and two is just too extreme for me. Yeah, I don't know. I'm on the opposite side. Canadians are going down south to play football because they're good enough to play there, and you're going to get noticed. That's just where it is. Uh, I don't know, like, if you're, if you're good enough, you're going to make the team. You don't need a gimme spot to be, you know, to have a shot, you know, go to camp, earn your keep, you know what I mean? 
That's that's how I feel. The Canadian the CFL is not built on a seven man Canadian roster. That's not what the foundation of our league is, nor what I think anyone really cares about, to be honest. Like if you guys are all butthurt and wanna stop watching the CFL, there's the door. You know? <laughs> having two less Canadian players isn't gonna be a big deal. Why don't you just game... why don't you just watch NFL then? If it's we not do. A big deal. We do watch NFL. Harry, this is an NFL podcast. This is a well, football exactly. podcast. We exactly. do. I love both leagues, there, yeah, as you guys be, all know. There should be some Canadian. Why don't you just there. Why don't you just ban Americans, Harry? Why don't we make it the full Canadian football? Well, because it would suck. Drama- Let's be dr- honest. That's a little dramatic. Yeah, that's to the point. But that is uh, that is. I guess we can table it at that. We'll see. We'll see how this roster spot turns out. Um, but I mean, I don't think it's that big of a deal. But I mean, if I'm not, want to I'm not, it, not watching the CFL. Yeah, because, exactly. Like if you want to boycott it, there's yeah, the door. No, I mean, five guys is still five guys, but I just feel like it's a bit of a brash move, but Randy Ambrose is trying out new things and you can't fault him for trying stuff. If you have Canadians that are better at the line you're going to sign them. If you have a Canadian receiver that's a stud, that's actually a better football player than those linemen, you're going to sign the receiver. I think it, it'll work itself out. You know, that's just how it goes. The, the thing is, though, is that the Canadians are getting paid more than the Americans right now because if you do have a stud Canadian, you want to keep them because you have to start them in one of those seven spots, right? So a yep. Canadian old lineman could be making one hundred and thirty to 150000 and be like, you know, the fourth best alignment on the team. But because he's a Canadian, he's getting paid more. Whereas a stud American linebacker or, you know, some other position is only making 80, 90 because there's 50 other Americans waiting to play his position. And then they have the conversion in from Canadian dollars that they're getting paid in to American, which is a yeah. whole other conversation that yeah. we're not going to get into right <laughs> now because that's a whole other slippery slope yeah. and we do not have the time for that today. But... With that being said, Riley, just take us through some big, you know, free agent player movements in the CFL. Oh, my goodness, there's so many of them. I mean, the biggest one is I think the Eskimos absolutely won. Um, they picked up Trevor Harris. Um, Sir Vincent Rogers is going to the team. Greg Ellenson's going to Edmonton. They pretty much just stole Ottawa and uh, took all their best players because Ottawa's management must have slept in on free agency or something. I have no idea, but they blew it. And then, of course, Mike Riley going to BC is a huge move. And William Powell going to the Riders. Prob- well, he was the best running back in the league last year, so that's huge. And because the Riders only got Zach Caleros back, they're going to need to run the ball 30 times probably a game. So William Powell and Marcus Thigpen are going to absolutely have to crush it for the Riders this year. Yeah, there's there's huge moves everywhere. I think Edmonton won free agency, and I think Montreal got a lot better too. I don't think that they will be the laughing stock of the league next year. Yeah, I agree. And just a big, big quarterback, almost controversy. Not really though. Bo Levi Mitchell resigns with the Stampeders for less money than both Edmonton and Saskatchewan offered him. Toronto, so, yeah, Toronto too. Yeah, Toronto, Toronto as well. Him a lot. <laughs> so he's a he's a homer. And we are looking forward to beating him this year. And with that, that is all of us from our first episode back in the 2019-2020 football season. All of you that are going to be partaking in March Madness today, because I guess this comes out on Thursday, have fun. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. I hope both of you are excited. March Madness is the best. My Um, bracket's probably already broken by the time all of you are listening to this. Yeah. Yeah, and good luck to all of your brackets. And with that, we will talk to you next week where we are going to preview the NFL draft and go over some of the players and what we what you can look to expect. We may even sprinkle in a little bit of fantasy relevance into the NFL draft this year. We'll see where we get to. But with that, from all of us at Squid Kick Radio, we will see you next week. I got, I, I, I got, I, I got you stuck off the real, the, the realness. Think, 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 think not this, 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 this shit's too hot. Too, too, too hot. Too, 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 too hot. Rock, 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 rock.